violent dramas play out on a daily basis. Killer tactics are critical for some. They rely on stealth, others on bold frontal assaults. Predator swarms use strength in numbers to take down prey by the thousand. And when it comes to close combat, lethal weapons will win the battle between life and death. But as prey adapts to the onslaught, the weapons of Africa's deadliest evolve constantly. There is a wilderness in South Africa where brutal confrontations are a way of life. A world of heat and drought that hides the largest and deadliest killers in Africa beneath its thorny veneer. This legendary killing field is the Kruger National Park. Ironically, one of the most dangerous creatures of all isn't a hunter. It's a deadly herbivore. The hippopotamus dominates the waterways and drinking pools. Only the Nile crocodile rivals the hippo's human death toll. The hyper-aggressive grazers come armed with canines the length of a forearm and jaws that can crush a man to death. Their deadly trait is a hair-trigger temper. Hippos will charge and attack any threat that gets too close. They feed on grass, but Kruger's blazing sun scorches their sensitive hairless skin. Hippos must spend daylight hours in the water to protect themselves from sunstroke. But in the dry winter, water is a precious resource. Dominant male hippos guard it like gold. They'll share their stretch of river with harems of females to secure mating rights. But they'll fight off any male that invades their space. This bull wants to take over the dominant male stretch of river. They wield their massive canines like daggers to gore each other's gums. The duel stops only when there's a clear winner. The loser backs off, sheathes his weapon and blubbers his submission. He's lucky. Battles like this can rage to the death or leave survivors scarred for life. When the brutal sun retreats, the hippos finally get to feed. Under the cover of darkness, the three-ton beasts leave the water and head out into the grasslands to graze. They have little to fear. They're more dangerous than most of the predators that trawl this bush. Most but not all. This troop of killers will risk everything to feast on these mountains of meat. 
one of Africa's most powerful terrestrial predators. When they team up to hunt en masse, they are formidable. A pride of 16 has this bull surrounded. They mob him with jaws and claws. The hippo can crush a skull with a bite. He's as likely to kill a lion as the lions are to kill him. wins this fight. Lions live with failure. Only three out of 10 hunts result in a kill. That's the cost of taking on one of the largest and most dangerous species in Africa. Daylight brings new opportunities for the most ambitious of predators. Only lions can tackle full-grown mega herbivores because only lions have the size, power, and weaponry to kill them. Jaws that can pierce through a car tire. Retractable claws that fly open like switchblades to slice through five centimeter hides and a lightweight skeleton that supports extra muscle mass for extraordinary power. These weapons combine to make individual lions one of the most powerful predators on dry land. Prides up to 20 strong can match Africa's largest herbivores kilogram for kilogram. In addition, Every pride has a secret weapon that ups the odds of success. Fully grown males. At 200 kilograms, male lions weigh as much as a motorcycle and body slam prey like a head-on collision. A male's power could have sealed the hippo's fate, but their help is never guaranteed. Despite their strength, male lions leave most of the hard work of hunting to the females. The lionesses take feeding the pride into their own hands. they set their sights on another difficult target. A big giraffe can be a serious threat to a lion. The towering browser has an elegant gait, but its powerful kick can kill quite easily. The pride must carefully corner their victim. Surrounded on all sides, the giraffe has too many targets. It can't fend off all the lions at once.
Every kick could be a death blow. But the Lions risk it. They need to pull the giraffe off balance to get it down, but they don't have the weight. When all hope of a kill seems lost, the male line attacks like a wrecking ball. The male lion's weight topples the giraffe at last. A kill this size is worth risking lives for. The clash of lethal weaponry is not exclusive to the warfare of land-based animals. These battles began in the deep seas, where life first learned to kill. The warmest waters on the planet wash Africa's eastern shore, the Indian Ocean. The creatures that survive beneath its surface have had three billion years to hone their weapons. There's intense competition for food, especially on the reefs. Down here, prey can escape in three dimensions, so predators must perfect the element of surprise. To do so, one hunter has evolved to be invisible. It looks just like an algae-covered rock. But the stonefish is waiting here for a reason. This master of deception is one of the deadliest fish known to man. 13 spines on its back can deliver a dose of lethal neurotoxin that cripples a man with excruciating pain in 30 minutes. As its name implies, the stonefish looks just like a rock. Its rough, scaleless skin is the color and texture of stone. To complete the disguise, it secretes a mucus that stimulates the growth of algae. It can go hours without moving a muscle. A school of glasses is also on the hunt, unaware of the killer in their midst. Only the hollow of an eyeball betrays its disguise. The small fish swims only inches from its jaws, oblivious to the danger. It all happens in the blink of an eye. The stonefish creates a massive vacuum in its mouth, which sucks prey up in 15 thousandths of a second. The victim doesn't see it coming. The disguise is dropped for only a moment before the killer goes back into hiding. The surviving glasses attract a second hunter, a snake-like fish that hides among the very rocks the stonefish imitates. The moray eel also likes to play the waiting game. This snowflake moray is barely the length of a shoelace, but some species can grow to twice the length of a man. Their cavernous mouths are coated with toxins, giving them an agonizing bite which can cause blood poisoning. 
Their fearsome jaws gape constantly to pump water over their gills. But deeper down their patterned throats lies the most alien of weapons. A second set of jaws that reach up when prey is caught and pull chunks of flesh down into the gut. With weapons like these, even this small specimen is a voracious hunter. The eel conceals its body in the labyrinth of tunnels that riddle the reef and dangles its head out like a frond of seaweed. Again, the fish are none the wiser. The foul mouth spreads its poison as the hidden jaws tear chunks from their victim. The reef is a diverse habitat. Every surface is a different color, shape and texture. There are an infinite number of holes, caves and overhangs for predators to hide in. But one animal's disguise is so remarkable, it can hide in plain sight. The common octopus is both intelligent and crafty. This boneless mollusk can transform its shape, texture and size in a flash. It literally disappears into the reef. Muscles contract pigment-holding cells in its skin, initiating a transformation faster than any other color-changing animal. Its extraordinary brain coordinates split-second changes in camouflage based on continuous scans of its surroundings. It can even assume the texture of the reef below it. Thousands of supersensory suckers line its eight muscular legs and feed it a stream of information about the taste and texture of the reef. It uses the intel to find prey and plan its attack. But that's not all the suckers are good for. The suction caps also latch onto prey as the octopus deploys its deadliest tool, a toxic snapping beak. The beak hides at the center of its body, designed to pierce through hard shells and exoskeletons. The octopus needs its weapons for defense too. This male has already lost sections of his leg to predators. But with camouflage and rippling colors, he makes it hard for enemies to lock onto him. If that doesn't work, a decoy will. A jet of ink blacks out the enemy's view just long enough for a getaway. But he's fled from one killer into the lair of another. This reef is the territory of another larger male octopus. Octopi are willing cannibals. The trespasser is fair game. Size decides who leaves these battles alive. The landlord's superior bulk seals his victory. He envelops his rival in a tomb of skin. Webbing between his legs restricts any movement as his vicious beak tears the victim apart.
Because of their high protein, boneless flesh, octopi are a top prey for hundreds of marine predators. 1,600 kilometers to the south lie the cold waters of the Atlantic Ocean. Here, off the beaches of Cape Town, is an outcrop of rock that octopi approach at their peril. Vast, swaying kelp provides rich hunting grounds for octopi. But the underwater forests are guarded by a deadly pack of predators. Cape fur seals. Changing color won't help the octopus escape these enemies. The seals see in black and white. And their exceptional low light vision helps them look through the octopus disguise. They've locked onto him. Discovered by the seals, the octopus's only chance is to cling to the rocks for dear life with its powerful suckers. The invertebrate puts up a fight, but the sheer strength of the seal's tree trunk necks overpower him. A last inkjet is his swan song. In seconds, there's nothing left of him. Once the hunt is over, the killers must surface. Seals weren't made to live in the ocean. They breathe air, just like humans. Seals live in a limbo between land and sea. Their legs transformed into flippers for swimming. But they are awkward and clumsy outside the water. Seals must mate and raise their young on land. In breeding season, up to 75,000 gather on this rock off Cape Town, Seal Island. In summer, all the females give birth together, so the island is flooded with hungry young seals. The mums need to hunt to keep up their milk supply, and the pups must survive many days without feeding. The mothers must find prey on a tight deadline. Females often commute nearly 100 kilometers in search of fish. The kelp forests are a good place to start. Like the reef, the kelp provides habitats and hiding places for a host of marine organisms, which makes them rich hunting grounds. Another fleet of predators has the same idea. A colony of African penguins claims a beach on the shores of South Africa's Cape Coast, not far from Seal Island. They also head out to the kelp forest to fish. Individual penguins can swallow more than 100 fish a day. To the seals, they're swimming lunch boxes. The Cape fur seals dive deep and hide between the kelp fronds to ambush the penguins scouting for anchovy fish from above.
the seals capitalize on the penguins' efforts. The seals' jaws were built to snap down with extreme force, but not to chew. It uses a different weapon to tear penguins open. It's powerful neck. The seal shakes the penguin violently to rip open the body cavity in a process called degloving. All the fish in the penguin's belly are spilled and eaten. The seals aren't interested in the penguin itself. Its shredded carcass is left for the gulls. One penguin's gut doesn't feed all the seals. They must head for deeper water in search of their primary prey. Shoaling fish. The seal's remarkable spine is a formidable weapon for snatching high-speed fish. Oversized vertebrae with fewer interlocking parts than typical mammals give the neck enormous strength, yet uncanny elasticity. It's so flexible that it can twist in any direction to match the school's darting movement. After the hunt, the mother seals race back home to feed their pups before they die of starvation. But the journey is blocked by a deadly barrier. The waters around Seal Island are patrolled by the oldest super predator in the ocean. This is the most feared fish of all time. Seals are the number one prey item for the great white shark. 400 million years of evolution have forged its weapons to perfection. It has up to 300 teeth in its mouth, and every time a tooth is lost or broken, another comes forward to replace it. Serrated like a steak knife, the teeth close together almost perfectly. By swinging its head, the shark can literally saw off entire limbs from its prey. These sharks are experts at killing seals. As the seals breathe at the surface, the great white sinks into its ambush position. The shark's slate gray upper body blends perfectly with the deep ocean floor. It's almost invisible from above. A near miss but the attack sparks a retreat. And the waters are now infested with sharks. Attacks come from all sides. Only a lucky few make it home to feed their young. With each victim, the sharks kill two seals, the mother 
and the pup that will starve without her. Not all of nature's most impressive weapons belong to giants. Back on the mainland, some of the smallest creatures bear the deadliest tools. These are the coastal forests of Mozambique. Endless heat and humidity spur abundant plant growth. The rich vegetation teems with life and killers ready to take it. Among them is a snake with the highest human death toll in Africa. A slug-shaped heavy body makes it slow, but it has one of the world's fastest strikes. The puff adder is a notorious hunter. This snake's most cunning tool is disguise. Nestled in the dry leaf litter, its rough, tawny scales render it all but invisible. The puff adder rarely hunts down prey. It goes undercover and lets prey come to it. Perfectly hidden, it lies in wait, ready to draw a deadly set of sabers. Fangs up to 18 millimeters long inject a massive dose of venom deep into its victim's tissues. The venom dissolves flesh. One snake carries enough to kill five grown men, and they can catapult forward in one twenty-seventh of a second to deliver it. Powerful muscles, more specialized than any other animal, coil like a spring for a lightning-fast strike. Like all snakes, the puff adder must shed its skin as its body grows. And once its new hide hardens, it's time to eat. It's picked up the trail of a mouse. The adder tastes the air and ground to track its prey. When it's in range, it freezes and waits. The oblivious mouse wanders straight into the strike zone. The assault takes a quarter of a second, faster than the blink of an eye. The force of the impact is so great that the mouse dies almost instantly. The toxin begins to dissolve it before it's even swallowed. The snake uses its dagger-like fangs to walk the victim down its throat. In Africa, lethal weapons are wielded by animals of all sizes. From a reptile as small as a ruler, to a juggernaut twice the size of a man. When you're the largest terrestrial animal on the planet, size is your weapon. The African elephant weighs as much as a school bus and charges almost as fast. The mere sight of an elephant is enough to send smaller animals packing. Even Africa's top predator gives way to this giant.
An elephant is armed with more than just bulk. Iconic tusks weighing more than 40 kilograms each are tools for feeding or weapons for fighting. Animals know it's dangerous to hang around a creature with the strength to push down a tree and the power to punch right through one. This stubborn rhino is literally pushing his luck. The juvenile elephant bull does not want company. At two tons, the rhino packs a punch, but it can't risk being gored. It's not a fair fight. Size wins out in the end. When combatants are equally matched, the results can be deadly. African elephant bulls fight each other for the right to mate. And aggression levels are further heightened if the bull is in must. During a must period, an elephant is flooded with testosterone. Temporal glands swell and a strong smelling fluid as sticky as tar runs down their temples. Their swollen glands cause severe pain and send the volatile bulls into a state of rage. A bull is far more likely to charge when he's in must. Intoxicated by hormones, the elephant's size and tusks are weapons of destruction. Ten thousand kilograms meet in a head-on collision. Today, the loser walks away unscathed. Many are not so lucky. Blunt force and venom aren't the only ways to kill in the African bush. This high-speed, elastic weapon makes this otherwise awkward lizard a formidable insect predator. The projectile is a suction cup, and a shell-crushing set of jaws finishes the job. Its feet are shaped to grip thin branches, and its colour-changing skin allows it to mimic the foliage. But one member of this bizarre reptile family has forsaken the canopy. It thrives in one of the harshest environments in the world. The Namib Desert. Formed roughly 55 million years ago, this wilderness is littered with granite boulders and scorching sands. Yet against all odds, the Namaqua chameleon has evolved to survive in this merciless landscape. Its colour-changing skin doubles as a temperature control system. In the freezing winter mornings, it becomes darker to absorb sunlight. But in the blazing heat of the day, it goes ash-white to reflect it. 
Or in this case, it does both. This desert dweller has no problem with overheating. The Tok Toki beetle is a favorite meal for the chameleon. Specially adapted to gallop over sand, the beetle generates its own cooling wind. Despite the chameleon's specially modified toes that spread wide for extra traction, it can't keep up on the soft sand. Watered by this quick-moving tok toki, the chameleon changes tactics. It heads to what little vegetation there is and waits for prey to come to it. Matching its colour to its surroundings, the chameleon can afford to be patient. Many Tok Tokis pass this way. No direction is safe. The chameleon really does have eyes in the back of its head. short chase, and the deadly tongue seals the beetle's fate. The high-speed organ can pull far larger prey into the chameleon's mighty jaws. Snakes, lizards, and poisonous scorpions can fall prey to the Namaqua chameleon. In Africa's Namib Desert, hunters can't be picky. Even their own kind is fair game. In the vast, empty expanse, prey is scarce. There's no love lost between Namaqua chameleons and their young. An infant is as good a protein source as any. It acts on instinct to survive. Under cover of night, a killer emerges, armed with a weapon that can take down a victim more than 6,000 times its weight. The black, thick-tailed scorpion can kill a full-grown man. It hides out under soil and rocks in the heat of the day and creeps out after dark to trawl the desert for victims. Most scorpions are sit-and-wait predators, but not this one. It makes its own luck by tracking down its prey. Scorpions have an extraordinary set of sensors. Eight eyes differentiate little more than light and dark. This animal perceives the world through touch. Special antennae like structures called pectines hang underneath the scorpion's abdomen and constantly feel the ground for traces of prey. 
it can lock onto the trail left by a cockroach in pitch darkness and hunt it down. Once it's in range, fine supersensory hairs detect even the faintest vibrations in the air. They can literally feel their prey's movements. Now, its most potent weapon comes into play. A lethal stinger packed with two sacks of neurotoxic venom so deadly it causes human paralysis, convulsions and death. The cockroach can't hide. The scorpion doesn't need to see it to find it. There is no escape. The hunter snatches the victim in its pincers for just long enough to drive its stinger home between a joint in the cockroach's armour. The venom starts to liquefy the insect inside its exoskeleton as the scorpion finds a safe place to drink its meal. Survival on the African continent is a lottery. Lethal weapons are wielded by fearsome predators and prey alike. But for Africa's deadliest, a fearsome arsenal gives them more chance than most.